This is why you guys are cute. This video is going to be all about how to study for the psychiatry and neurology shelves. Hello and welcome back to my channel. First, I want to apologize for not having uploaded a new video in a long time. And I'm basically just going to blame it on the fact that I was on my internal medicine rotation and I just didn't really have a ton of extra time to work on these videos. If you haven't been to my channel before, my name is Erica and I'm currently a third year medical student. This video is going to be all about how to study for the psychiatry and neurology shelves. So let's start with psychiatry. First, I want to talk about how long should you study. Obviously, this really depends on what your baseline psychiatry foundation is. If you still remember a good amount of detail about psychiatry from when you studied for step one, then you probably don't need a ton of time to study for the shelf exam. To give you an example, I probably studied for the shelf for maybe two weeks. And it's not like I was studying all day, every day for these two weeks. I still was on my rotation, so I was probably studying for about two to three hours a day for these two weeks, as well as on the weekends, I'd study for longer periods of time. Based on my experience now having taken the shelf exam, I think that for psychiatry, the main focus was on differentiating between diagnoses that were really similar or were easily confused with each other, and then also recognizing what medications to use when and their side effects. So in terms of differentiating between different diagnoses, I felt like there was a lot of focus, again, on diseases that are really easily confused. So to give you an example of that, one question I've seen so commonly is being able to differentiate between true dementia and pseudodementia. Pseudodementia is basically depression that causes a reversible cognitive problem in older individuals, but they can present extremely similarly in clinic and that's how they'll try to get you on the shelf exams. Another topic they really like to test on are the differences between diseases that sound very similar in terms of the way they're named and differ mainly on the basis of timing or other symptoms that they have with these diseases. And so one example that I can give you for that is how to differentiate between schizophrenia, schizophrenic form, schizoaffective disease, and schizotypal personality disorder. And so all four of those things are extremely different. Some are different based on the timing of the disease. Some are based on different symptoms like having mood symptoms as well as, well as the psychosis um, or being a personality disorder versus another type of disease. So there are a lot of really similar sounding diseases that they'll try to trick you on or different presenting symptoms that look really similar and they'll try to make you differentiate between the two to make the choice on the test. And in terms of differentiating between these diagnoses, I really found that the best way to study for this is really just doing a bunch of practice questions. And so of course the first question bank that everyone really turns to is UWorld. In terms of psychiatry, there's about 240 questions and they were pretty easy to move through. You definitely go through the psychiatry questions a lot faster than you would say maybe internal medicine questions. So I would say that for these 240 questions, you could probably get them done within four or five days, just depending on how much time you have each day to study um, and how much of that time you really want to spend on questions versus reading or whatever other resources you're using to study for the shelf exam. I personally got through it and I believe about five days. In terms of other sources for questions, I really enjoyed the AMBOSS questions. I just recently started using it for these past couple shelf exams, um, but I find the AMBOSS questions great because they're actually a little bit harder than the questions that you'll find in the shelf exam. So I feel like when I can do them well on the AMBOSS questions, um, when I get to the real shelf exam, the questions seem a lot easier and it's really things that I've seen already. So I felt like doing all those questions both on AMBOSS and on New World really helped me to prepare for the shelf. And then as I mentioned before, one of the other hot topics for questioning on the psychiatry shelf are medications. Once you use them, what their side effects are, um, contraindications, all that kind of stuff. And I really do feel like sketchy medical covers that really well. Um, I didn't feel like there were any side effects that I didn't know of um, after just having watched the sketchy videos. So I think in terms of studying for the drugs for psychiatry, that's probably gonna be your main resource. So on top of sketchy, as well as the practice problems I talked about earlier, the only other resources I used were first aid for psychiatry and online med ed. 
but honestly when I'm looking back at it after having taken the shelf I really don't think it's probably necessary to read through the first aid for psychiatry um, I think that if you're uncomfortable with just studying from questions and you're the type of person who really likes to read through books then the first aid for psychiatry is definitely covers everything that you'll need to know um, the only thing is that it's really dry and I just honestly felt like I was reading through the DSM when I was reading through the first aid book not the most fun thing to read if you're the kind of person that learns through reading, then I definitely think it's a good resource for you. In terms of online med ed, I really enjoy these videos because especially for psychiatry, he does a really good job at differentiating what kind of diseases they're going to try to trick you on because they're so similar in presentation or name or whatever it is. And he really emphasizes how they're going to trick you and how you can notice the subtle differences between the diseases. So going back to how I was talking about how that's the main portion of the shelf exam, I really think that these videos helped a lot. And I honestly just watched the videos while I was running on the treadmill in the mornings. Um, so I just did them while I was exercising and I didn't really feel like I was wasting any time by watching them. But they're also not videos that are so detailed that you need to take notes or really focus on them. So I feel like I could multitask like that. So to sum it up, I feel like I probably studied for about two weeks for the psychiatry shelf. For the first week of that two week study period, I was mainly focused on getting through reading the first aid for psychiatry as well as completing all the UL's questions and of course taking my notes as I felt necessary through those questions. And then during the last week of my shelf preparation, I spent that time mainly getting through as many AMBOSS questions as I possibly could, watching those online med ed videos just while I was running on the treadmill, and then of course reviewing all the notes that I took while I was going through my UL's questions. I'm also a really big fan of doing the NBME practice exams that are online. They're $20 each. Um, but I just feel like they're worth it for me because I use them as a way to kind of mark my progress and see if I'm improving and learning new stuff as I'm going throughout my study period. So typically I'll do one at the beginning of my studying, so maybe when I haven't really studied at all, just to see where my baseline is at. And then the other ones I'll do later on, closer to the shelf. So I have those questions fresh in my mind. So now let's talk about the neurology shelf. Honestly, I felt like neurology was super straightforward as well. At my school, the neurology rotation is actually only a four week rotation compared to other rotations, which are anywhere between six and 12 weeks. So it's the shortest rotation for us. Um, and in my situation, it was also kind of weird because I had four weeks of internal medicine and then I had my four weeks of neurology and then took that shelf. And then I went back to internal medicine for another four weeks and then took that shelf. So I had my neurology clerkship kind of squeezed in the middle of my internal medicine rotation. And honestly, I didn't really mind it. I didn't really find it as a disadvantage at all. If anything, I felt like it maybe was an advantage because during my neurology clerkship, I actually studied for internal medicine a little bit. So again, like I said, my neurology clerkship was four weeks. And for the first two weeks of my neurology clerkship, I was actually continuing to study for my internal medicine job. And that's just because I knew it was gonna be really difficult, there's a lot of content to cover, and I felt like two weeks is enough for neurology, and it definitely was. So those first two weeks of neurology, I really wanted to focus on just studying for internal medicine still. So during those two weeks that I really dedicated to studying for neurology, the first thing I did was really complete all of the URLs questions that were for neurology and ophthalmology. There are about 200 questions total for neurology and ophthalmology. Again, I was able to get through these pretty quickly. It probably took me between three and four days to complete all these questions, take my notes as needed as I usually do. Then after I finished the URLs questions, the next thing I did was read blueprints for neurology. And again, looking back on it, I don't really think you need to read the Blueprints book. I honestly didn't really feel like it was detailed enough compared to the kind of stuff that you were going to learn from the URLs questions. So if I could redo it again, I probably wouldn't even touch this book. Not a bad book. It's really good, especially if you don't have a really good foundation for neurology. Um, it kind of just gets you a good foundation to start on, and then the URLs questions really get you all the details. I also went through all of the online med ed videos, as well as all of the AMBOSS questions. Again, because AMBOSS is harder than the real NVMe shelf, I felt that getting through all those questions was great repetition, so I felt like that really hammered it in for me. Um, so I felt like doing all the AMBOSS questions available was extremely helpful and probably my main 
mode of studying and probably helped me the most during the study period. So again, just to sum up what I did for neurology, I took about two weeks to study for neurology. The first week, again, I was focused on reading through the textbook, the Blueprints Neurology book that I used, as well as getting through all of the URL's questions. And then the second week, I focused mostly on the online med ed videos, which again, I did the same thing and I just watched while I'm running on the treadmill. I also completed all of the AMBOSS questions and reviewed through my URL notes that I took while I was going through the questions for the first time. And then also, because I'm the kind of person that likes to see as many questions as possible, I purchased all of the practice neurology MBMEs and I did all of those. Again, I did the same thing where I took the first one at the beginning of my real study period, like two weeks before the exam when I first started reading through um, the Blueprints book and starting the world questions. And then I took the other ones kind of more towards the end, closer to the shelf exam. Again, as a gauge of my progress to see if I was getting better on my scores and really studying the right way. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you have a better understanding of ways that you might be able to study for psychiatry and neurology shelves. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button because I upload new videos every Thursday. I hate you. Okay, you can come out, you dumb butt.